a big blow against cybercrime. Police pouncing on a homegrown scammer who allegedly sent millions of fake text messages from his lounge room. The setup uncovered in his home, so simple but frighteningly effective. Police! Search warrant! Open the door! A suburban home in Sydney's southwest. Police! Search warrant! Open the door! Police are after a 39-year-old man inside. Police! Search warrant! Open the door! Open the door now! Open the door now! He's wanted over 17 million fake text messages allegedly sent to trick unsuspecting victims. Hurry up. Open the door now. Heavily armed police surround the property and move in to arrest their target. Police search warrant! Police search warrant. They find him inside the Moorbank home along with an EFTPOS machine and these two black boxes, lined with antennas and dozens of SIM cards. It looks like a simple setup, but police allege it's potentially cost Australians millions of dollars. This is all very familiar to you. <laughs> yeah, we'd usually be walking behind. Michael used to be a digital forensic specialist in the New South Wales Police Force. So we'll just pause it here. Michael, what is this equipment? So these are typically known as SIM boxes. So essentially they're just a bank of GSM modems or, or cellular modems, each one with their own corresponding SIM card that can be used to send out bulk SMSs. Detectives allege these devices can hold over 250 active SIM cards and will typically send out 150,000 messages a day. In this case, they allege the scammer was posing as companies, including Australian Post and Linked. They're often connected to a computer, so the computer will craft the message and uh, any responses, if, if, uh, if they elicit responses, they'll come back through that computer as well. Those pink squares, they're the SIM cards? Yeah, so the SIM cards are inserted into the top of these devices, uh, just as you would in a mobile phone. So the idea of it is that they're sending fake links that you click on. That's right, so that's, that's a common uh, technique. Uh, they'll send out links uh, from common Australian businesses such as Australia Post or banks. Uh, and the idea is to instill a sense of urgency in clicking the link or providing information. So for every 10 messages that you send, one person will click? Well, that's right. There's, there's always going to be someone who is not aware of these types of scams or may think that they're, they're legitimate messages. This is one of the messages police allege the accused mastermind was sending. So, as you can see, it's designed to instil a sense of urgency. Uh, you know, the person might see that as, uh, look, it's only a $7 bill, they might just click on the link and pay it. Um, but they might not just be paying that amount, they may be scammed out of more. While this man waits to face court, phishing scams are becoming more common. Pensioner Andrew was the victim of an unrelated con tricked into believing he had an unpaid toll. Clicking on the link cost him thousands when his scammer went shopping. The next day, it turned out I was hit for $11,000 in $1,000 hits with Kmart. Catherine was also targeted by the same fake text message as Andrew. It was about two weeks later that they went and spent $8,000 in Victoria. I live in New South Wales. How do police detect these type of operations? Look, I think in many cases it's a coordinated effort between the public receiving these messages and reporting those scams to, to ACMA or through cyber.gov.au. But also a lot of this information comes from the telcos themselves. You normally just assume or you think that these people are sitting overseas. You would assume that and look, these sorts of crimes can occur from anywhere in the world. Um, with the internet, uh, everyone's got connectivity. Uh, to all over the world. This sort of equipment is readily available. So once these boxes are seized, what do police do with them? So we would uh, typically analyse uh, the contents of the SIM card, um, try and determine what data is stored on these devices, if any, um, and that all goes to proving the offence. Almost 100,000 Aussies have fallen victim to phishing scams this year making cyber crooks more than $25 million. What can everybody learn from this arrest? 
I think it's important to stay vigilant and question the authenticity of messages that you receive. Um, certainly don't click on any links that you're uh, not aware of and look up phone numbers from official websites. Thank you.